everybody, welcome back to another episode of Goodreads. In the last episode, we talked about left bundle branch blocks and what's a normal left bundle branch box, and we talked about the law of appropriate discordance. Basically means that in a left bundle branch block, if we have a negative deflecting QRS, we should see some degree of ST segment elevation. That's normal. And in a positive deflecting QRS, we should see some degree of ST segment depression. What does an abnormal left bundle branch look like specifically in terms of acute myocardial infarction? And an abnormal left bundle branch block is any situation where the law of appropriate discordance is violated. We have a specific set of circumstances and rules and collectively we, we refer to those as the Scarbosa criteria. And there are actually three different criteria for an abnormal left bundle branch block. And they're known as criteria A, B, and C. And all three of these together form the Scarbosa. So we're going to talk about each of the criteria individually. And then in the next video, we'll show you what some of these 12 leads look like for a little bit more context. But for this one, we're just going to talk about what the criteria are and the definitions of them. Criteria A is concordant ST segment elevation. And so concordant means in the same direction. So on a normal left bundle branch block, you're going to have a positive deflecting QRS. And there should be some degree of ST segment depression. That's what we should expect. However, criteria A, which is concerning for acute myocardial infarction, occurs when we have a positive deflecting QRS and some ST segment elevation. This is really no different than how we normally scan for STEMIs and everything else. So ST segment elevation concordant with a positive deflecting QRS in any lead is concerning for acute myocardial infarction via criteria A of Scarbosa. Criteria B, on the other hand, is concordant ST segment depression. So this refers to the QRSs that are negative deflecting. And in the negative deflecting QRS, we should see some degree of ST segment elevation or the J point returning to the baseline. So what does a positive criteria B look like? A negative deflecting QRS and a J point that has some ST segment depression or does not go back to the isoelectric baseline. And so that's positive for criteria B. And we are looking for this specifically in the precordial leads V1 through V3 will give us a positive criteria B. And then the last one, criteria C, is excessively disconcordant. We already said that a negative deflecting QRS should have some degree of ST segment elevation or a return to the isoelectric baseline, but there's a predefined limit as to how much is allowed. And the old criteria C used to say that if the ST segment elevation was greater than five millimeters, or five small boxes, that was positive for criteria C. That's now been changed due to the Smith modified criteria. They've now applied a 25% rule, and if the ST segment elevation is 25% of the preceding R wave, or depth of the QRS complex, that's positive for criteria C. Interestingly enough, criteria C actually tends to be very sensitive for pacemaker patients. So left bundle branch blocks and pacemaker patients all fall under the same category. Criteria C, we are looking for in any lead. So criteria A, any lead. Criteria C, any lead. Criteria B, with the negative deflecting QRS complexes, we're looking at V1 through V. The textbooks, in order to actually consider this a acute myocardial infarction, assigns a point value. I found that really confusing, so to simplify it, criteria A, you need one lead to call it an occlusive myocardial infarction. Criteria B, you need one lead to call this an acute myocardial infarction. And criteria C, you need at least two leads with excessively disconcordant segment elevation. So these are the three criteria for Scarbosa. And in the next video, we'll go over some actual 12 leads. 